Hello students. In this lecture, we will study dimensional equations and their uses. What is a dimensional equation? It is an equation which shows how and which of the fundamental units of mass, length and time are related to the physical quantity. So such equation is dimensional equation. It gives us an idea of which fundamental quantities are involved in this derived physical quantity and how they are involved. For example, Consider the physical quantity power. The power has dimensions of m raised to 1, that is, we may leave it blank, which may will mean that it is m raised to 1, l raised to 2, t raised to minus 3. So, this is the dimension equation of power. Here, mass has dimension of 1, length has dimension of 2, time has dimension of minus 3. Such equations are called as dimensional equations. These are useful for the dimensional analysis. What is meant by this, now we want to study. Now, let us see first use of dimensional analysis to convert a unit from one system to another. We know that Measurement of a physical quantity, it is often expressed as a product of number and a unit. So, any physical quantity, it is a number and unit. For example, 10 kilograms. So, 10 is the associated number, kilogram is a unit. If we change the unit of measurement, then the associated number also will change. So, if we are measuring the weight in grams, so then 10 kilograms will change into 10 into 1000 grams, that is 10,000 grams. It is often desired to change unit of a physical quantity from one system to another system of units. This can be done easily if we know the dimensional formula of the quantity. For example, consider a physical quantity. A physical quantity Let its dimensional formula is m raised to a, l raised to b, t raised to c. Now, consider first system of the base units which is m1, l1 and t1. These are the fundamental units of mass, length and time in the first system of measurements. And let, consider, let us consider the another system of fundamental units M2, L2 and T2. Let this physical quantity 
which has dimensional formula m raised to a l raised to b t raised to c it has value x1 in the system of first fundamental units so that x1 m1 raised to a l1 raised to b t1 raised to c the dimensional formula will not change even though the system of measurements is changed let the same physical quantity has value x2 in the system of measurements m2 l2 and t2 so this x2 is equal to m2 raised to a l2 raised to b t2 raised to c even though the system of measurements is changed from m1 l1 t1 to m2 l2 t2 the dimensional formula will remain the same the quantity has not changed though the system of measurement is changed from this system to this system the quantity has not changed at all what is the meaning of this x1 m1 raised to a l1 raised to b t1 raised to c is obviously equal to x2 m2 raised to a l2 raised to b t2 raised to c so we want to change the system of measurements from first to second so we want the value of the major associated number that is magnitude of the physical quantity x1 is the magnitude in the first system x2 is the magnitude in the second system we want the magnitude in the second system of measurements right so we can easily get it like this x2 is equal to x1 which is known to us and then what will be in addition m1 upon m2 raised to a l1 upon l2 raised to b t1 upon t2 raised to c so using this formula we can change the system of measurements from m1 l1 l1 m1 l1 t1 to m2 l2 t2 what is the meaning of this we can get the magnitude of the physical quantity in the another system of measurements by using this equation so for this what should we know we should know the dimensional formula of the physical quantity which is m raised to a l raised to b t raised to c let us try to understand this with an example value of g that is gravitational constant in cgs system is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 dynes centimeter square per gram square we want to find its value in mks system the value of gravitational constant is given in cg system we want to find it in mks system 
to begin with always we should know the dimension equation of gravitational constant dimensional equation of g it is gravitational constant m raised to minus 1 l raised to 3 t raised to minus 2 is the dimensional equation or dimension formula for gravitational constant as we have seen earlier we know the formula for conversion is given by x2 is equal to x1 n2 m1 upon m2 raised to a l1 upon l2 raised to b t1 upon t2 raised to c what is a here minus 1 b is 3 c is minus 2 now to convert the unit from cg system to mk system what should we find we should find m1 upon m2 we should find l1 upon l2 we should find t1 upon t2 what is this m1 upon l2 sorry m1 upon m2 l1 upon l2 t1 upon t2 m1 first system is cj system second system is mk system so what should we what, what should we find we should find m1 upon m2 means unit of mass in cjs divided by unit of mass in mks that is 1 g divided by 1 kg we should find l1 upon l2 unit of length in cjs divided by unit of length in mks that is 1 cm divided by 1 m we should find t1 upon t2 unit of time in cjs divided by unit of time in mks that is 1 second divided by 1 second so what we should find here m1 upon m2 means unit of mass in cgs that is 1 g divided by 1 kg 1 cm divided by 1 m 1 second divided by 1 second so we will find this ratios now what is 1 g upon 1 kg we know that 1 g is equal to 1 upon 1000 kg so 1 g upon 1 kg is equal to 1 upon 1000 so this m1 upon m2 is equal to 1 g divided by 1 kg it is 1 upon 1000 now we want to find l1 upon l2 that is unit of length in cgs divided by unit of length in mks that is we want to know 1 cm upon 1 m we know that 1 cm is equal to 1 upon 100 meters so 1 cm divided by 1 m is equal to 1 upon 100 we want to know t1 upon t2 unit of time in cgs divided by unit of time in mks so it is 1 upon 1 now if we know this m1 upon m2 l1 upon l2 t1 upon t2 we can easily 
convert this value of gravitation constant from CGS to MKS. So x2 this equation becomes here x2 is equal to what is x1? x1 is given to us 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 into 1 upon 1000 raised to a. a is minus 1. 1 upon 100 raised to b which is 3. One upon one raised to minus two. C is minus two here. So x two is equal to six point sixty seven into ten raised to minus eight into this will be ten raised to three raised ten raised to three it is raised to minus one. So it will be one upon ten raised to three raised to minus one it will be 10 raised to 3. This will be 10 raised to minus 6. This 1 raised to minus 2, it is 1. So this final answer for x2 is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. So finally, we have obtained the value of gravitational constant in MKS system, it comes out to be 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter square per kilogram square. Using dimensional equation, we also can check the correctness of the derived relation connecting different physical quantities. For this, we use principle of homogeneity of dimensions. What is this principle? The dimension of quantities on the left hand side must be same as the dimensions of the quantities on the right hand side of the dimensional equation. This is principle of homogeneity of dimensions. Using this principle, we can check the correctness of any relation connecting various physical quantities. Let us try to understand this with an example. We want to check the correctness of the formula. Check. Which is the equation? T is equal to 2 pi square root of 1 upon acceleration divided by displacement. We want to check the correctness of this equation. What is this equation? time period of a body which is time period the equation is for time period of a body execute executing simple harmonic motion so this is the equation which is for a time period of a body which is undergoing simple harmonic motion we want to check the correctness of this equation So, what is the left hand side of the equation? It is T. So, dimensions on LHS. Dimensions of LHS. It is dimensions of time. So, M raised to 0, L raised to 0. raised to 1. So these are the 
dimension of a physical quantity on the left hand side. Now we will obtain the dimensions on the right hand side. If the dimensions on the right hand side we get same as this one m raised to 0, l raised to 0, t raised to 1 then we will say that yes this equation is correct. So now we will obtain dimensions of RHS. 2 pi is a dimensionless quantity, right? 2 pi. And then square root of 1 upon acceleration upon displacement. So, what I can write? It is dimensions of displacement divided by dimensions of acceleration raised to 1 half. So, dimensions of displacement divided by dimension of acceleration. raised to one half because this is all in square root. So, what are dimensions of displacement? Dimensions of displacement is dimension of length. So, it is L raised to one half. Dimension of acceleration. Acceleration means change in the velocity upon time. So, what are the dimensions of this acceleration we have seen it it is l raised to 1 t raised to minus 2 and again raised to 1 half so what this comes out to be it comes out to be l raised to 1 half l raised to 1 half will cancel each other it will be 1 upon t raised to minus 2 raised to 1 half. So, it is 1 upon t raised to minus 1. So, it is t raised to 1. So, it is m raised to 0, l raised to 0, t raised to 1. So, this dimensions on the right hand side come out to be same as dimensions of left hand side. So, this is how we are checking that this equation for time period of simple harmonic motion is correct by using principle of homogeneity of dimensions. With the help of dimension formula, it is also possible to derive a relationship between different physical quantities. The concept of homogeneity of dimensions can be used to find a possible relationship between different physical quantities. But for this, it is required that we should have some preliminary idea about dependence of various quantities on each other. But these are limitations of dimensional analysis. The concept of dimensional analysis can be used successfully only in simple cases, but it cannot be used successfully in general because of following drawbacks. We cannot get any idea about the magnitude of dimensionless variables and dimensionless constants with the help of dimensional analysis. Further, this uh, method of dimensional analysis can be used only if the physical quantities depend upon mass, length and time. Also, it cannot be applicable if the relationship involves trigonometric exponential or logarithmic functions. So, though we can do many things with dimensional analysis, 
these are the limitations of dimensional analysis which also we should understand so thank you students